<laughs> Welcome to this edition of the Headless WordPress podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Everhart. And I'm his co-host, Fran Jam Stoked Agolto. Uh, and we're here today to do a little bit of a reintroduction to this podcast. For those of you who have been following along with uh, our Decode podcast, we've made a couple of changes and so wanted to do an episode just to introduce those changes to our listeners. So first of all, you might have noticed that we've changed the name of this podcast. With It was the Decode podcast. Now we're being a little bit more specific and calling this the Headless WP podcast. I think that just gives you all a better idea of what to expect and removes a little bit of confusion that we at WP Engine had between some of our developer relations initiatives like this podcast and then a pretty large developer conference that we run every year. Um, and just a reminder for everybody on the Headless WP podcast, we're here to focus on things across Headless WordPress. So that includes Jamstack uh, in the JavaScript ecosystem, some cloud hosting platforms, and bringing you uh, some of the coolest plugins and tools that will help you do that style of development. So Fran and I are here today and wanted to kick off our recording season uh, that we've got planned out over the next couple of months by just introducing ourselves as new members of the WP Engine Developer Relations team and digging a little bit into our developer origin stories. I don't know about you, Fran, but I always love a good developer origin story. It's so, funny you say that, Jeff, because I think developer origin stories actually are one of the main interesting foundations of what actually got me into my own web development found, you know, journey is listening to other people. So yes, to comment on yeah. your point. Yeah, I I, I, I 100% agree. And I think despite a lot of the gatekeeping that happens in tech, you know, becoming a software developer, becoming a software engineer is a really attainable goal for a lot of people oh, who, you know, might be coming at it as career switchers, you know, and I think we'll both get into that. And we've both got really unique paths that brought us here uh, to be developers. And then also maybe we can talk about, you know, how we transitioned into, into developer advocacy work. Um, so I'll start, Fran, and I'll just grill you if that's okay. So, you know, oh, just yeah. if you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of how you got into development, um, what does your experience with WordPress look like? You know, why yeah, headless absolutely. WordPress? And then, you know, why dev advocacy? So it's, it's an interesting journey that I've taken. And uh, for our older listeners who are used to having Kellen Mace, Matt Landers, Will Johnstone, who are Kellen's still on the team. Matt and Will um, are unfortunately by way of the dodo. Uh, they are not on the team anymore. However, they still help me actually and some of the team uh, internally. I hope that the change of the name, first, I just want to make a, uh, a comment, Jeff, uh, with all these ever-changing names and JavaScript frameworks that developers have to not memorize, but like have to be aware of, I hope this change in our name doesn't throw you guys off at all. It is the Headless WordPress podcast, not Decode anymore. Uh, my, you know, Jeff, I'll tell you, my journey started actually at WP Engine. And I was on the full sales side. Now to just backtrack real quick even more, I was a teacher for eight years. I started teaching kindergarten. Oh, wow. Absolutely. I, I don't even know if you, you're my teammate. No, I don't know that. I've, <laughs> I've known Fran for weeks now, and I did not know that. But that makes so much more sense now. I, I mean, not I, that it didn't, but wow. Okay, very cool. I, I was a teacher. Uh, I, I started in kindergarten. I taught for seven years, and I ended my career teaching freshmen in high school. That could be another podcast on its own on how to control a classroom. Oh, yeah. Jeff of freshmen. <laughs> oh, I understand. I'm there. What did you teach in high school? So so in high school, I taught algebra one and I okay. taught social studies. And then to supplement my salary, and this is leading into tech, because teachers unfortunately are underpaid. I think you agree with the rest of mm -hmm. the world that mm -hmm. kind of backwards. We, we should be showering teachers with money. A hundred percent. Um, I, after school, I, I coached track and I coached defensive backs on the football team to, to add a supplemental paycheck. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you get it, Jeff. I mean, in high yeah. school, you know, that teacher that was a coach too. Yeah. 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 That was me. Um, that was back in Los Angeles. And I, and I decided, you know what, the, not only the cost of living, but just in the environment and like me making about. 
back then, and again, I'm, I'm a little bit older, but back then I, I was making top 48K. Uh, you can't live in Los Angeles like yeah. that. I was living at, yeah. So I was like, I, you know what? I don't I know how to, that happens. It, was, it just, it's nuts. Here's how my journey got into tech. So I decided, you know what? I, I started doing research and I was like, I need a less expensive city, not now, but 13 years ago when I moved to Austin, Texas, affordable, yeah, really affordable. There was tech here and it was just like, I was like, oh, there's opportunity there. And if I'm going to switch out of teaching into something transitionally entry level into technology, Austin was the city. Um, I, San Francisco, obviously tech. Yeah, well, Austin now, I mean, yeah. they got a Dropbox office, a Google office. Last time I was in Austin, I walked by all those buildings. Oh, yeah. So it's it was, really blown up. It's blown up, man. In fact, uh, the, the real estate is here. And then, anyway, <laughs> had to get on a rabbit hole. But so I I, um, I moved I moved to Austin um, in, in 2010. And uh, the first job in tech, I didn't get a job in tech right away. I literally just to make it here because I I had it with the pay in California and the um, cost of living in Los Angeles. So when I moved to Austin just to make ends meet, Jeff, I worked as a banker at Wells Fargo, and then on the weekends I barbacked at a bar um, in the service industry. Well, uh, within that uh, year, I worked at uh, Wells Fargo. Um, I started doing research on companies that would take like entry level sales uh, positions that are in tech and long not to, to to make a like a longer story short um i started out as a what's called a sales development representative okay. at a tech company called rf code now jeff hmm. what they do they make rfids or something i mean you nailed it but it's oh, for okay. da data center asset management so when you're in a okay. data center yeah, and you need to and know which servers which and which and which server to decommission when it was put in. Yeah, all that, all that they tag them with RFID with with RFID tags, and a data center manager can log into the software, and then simply locate. It's like GPS for because these data centers like Facebook, Jeff, or any even like Google, Amazon, there's like just millions of square footage of racks of servers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. And yeah. it's, yeah, you, you could get, it could get real. You get some interesting people. It does. Working. Those are interesting <laughs> facilities. I mean, for sure. And I've got a lot of friends in like the HVAC mechanical control yeah. business. And those are like their dream place to work on. Cause it's all just cooling and, you know, and all supplemental air and kind of crazy stuff like that. But that's really interesting. So we, so you've come from LA yep. to Austin, you've got your initial job selling uh, RFIDs to data center management. So how did you come to work at WP Engine from there? Well, um, fast forward. So I, I got a job and basically that was my break into tech was RF code. After RF code, um, I worked for another um, company that sold hardware to data, CPUs, memories, and drives. Okay. Those things are, yeah, if you could, yeah. And unfortunately that company, um, was going through a little bit of layoffs because there was some kind of um, with the supply chain and everything and, and hardware and, and whatnot, they didn't need as many salespeople. So typically mm -hmm. what happens in an organization, Jeff, you might already know this marketing and sales when there's cuts, those mm -hmm. are typically the first to go. Um, and I'm sure those are both very cyclical businesses too. Cause it's uh, like hundred percent, not a, nobody's building data centers all the time. That's, you know, like five year type cycles of all right we've got this site um and i just knew that because where i was at in virginia blew up with data yeah. centers real quick oh virginia's a, yeah i mean yeah. i think there's a bunch of aws oh there are there's a ton. servers there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there's a whole that are ec2, <laughs> EC2. Uh, us us no sorry east one is virginia yeah so basically what happened was when they were laying off i was like well oh crap i i need a job so I started, um, this is kind of super random and it's interesting how you network. Uh, I, I um, for those of uh, in the audience that don't know this and, and some of our listeners, but those who know me personally, 
besides coding as my passion, I'm, I'm a rock climber. Um, I've been rock climbing for six years. And within the Austin climbing community, I, made, I met a friend who worked at WP Engine. She knew I got laid off. And she's like, hey, Fran, do you want to sell WordPress? And I'm like, what's WordPress? <laughs> Jeff, I yeah. was like, what is WordPress? And she's like, oh, it's, it's a CMS and it's um, for websites. And I was like, oh, oh, I'll be selling software as a service or a platform as a service. She's like, yeah. And I was like, okay, I applied. I got the job. Let me tell you something, Jeff, and I'm not just saying this because we both work here, but within the first three months working at WP Engine, I knew that I was at a company that actually gave a crap about their employees. Like <laughs> yeah. from the CEO, Heather down to yeah. and, and Jason Cohen to it, it, again, it's I'm built not, different. It's, it's built, built different. different. It's and, built different in a great way. Yeah. Which is why I lasted for three years in the, cause sales has a high turnover, Jeff, you, you mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. any industry, it doesn't matter what you're selling. It's burnout. It's, it's, it's yeah. hard. And, and I mean, hard, I've man. worked on the other side, on the buying side of enough kind of like enterprise technology deals to know that. Yes, that's, that's absolutely true. Like the sales rep who will start your like sales cycle is not the one who's there a year later when some of these larger orgs are like signing contracts and stuff. That's hundred um, percent correct. So, so and that's a really important, I mean, thing too, like that, having that interaction dialed in and having qualified good people who know what they're talking about in that role, especially with the tech stuff. Cause sometimes like they'll be like, well, I can't answer that. Or, you know, they'll tell you something that's not true. And lo and behold, it doesn't do what you want it to later. Uh, exactly that. Yeah. So here's the juicy meaty part that everybody's probably wanting to hear. Well, how'd you get into headless WordPress? And <laughs> how, you, you, you didn't even know how to code as a salesperson. No, I didn't. Well, heck, I didn't. I, I, it, during training at WP Engine, they're like, hey, friend, we're going to walk you through what a, um, how, how to build, how to uh, make a WordPress site, a monolithic, a, tra a traditional one, which is super easy, mm -hmm. right? But I, I I didn't I didn't know I barely, I I was like I, all I knew was URLs and address bars because I was just like yeah anybody that surfed the the, the now is just yeah so anyway anyway here's where like this is the story for me I think really gets interesting is because you know Jeff plot I gotta twist. tell you there's a plot twist here so COVID was overall negative for the world mm -hmm. like. It, 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 we're in a lot of, you know, there's a lot of stuff that went on and, and um, people's jobs got lost. There was domestic stuff that went on. A lot of stuff happened. It was just a lot. It was just a lot, man. And we got to oh, be kinder to each other. Yeah. Still, yeah. Yeah. And it's still, but here's some positives that came out. So March, 2020, or actually, no, sorry, June, 2020. I was sitting on, I think it was a decode, um, cause with WP Engine, their um, event is called decode for, for the developer side of the house, right? And I was I was in sta sales still, Jeff, and I was kind of like, I was at, at that point in during COVID, it was the height of it. And I was like, man, I can't see my friends cause the government saying, don't try to stay outside distance if you have to see people. So I'm stuck at home and there's only so much books I can read and like mm -hmm. Netflix I can binge and Star Wars I could rewatch. <laughs> um, so near and dear to my heart, the old head of DevRel here, Matt Landers, who's still a, one of my best friends and I still hang out with, um, he does this demo with Jason Cohen at Decode during the pandemic, the height of it. And he literally spins up and creates a WordPress site, decouples it, extends it as a headless CMS with WP GraphQL, spins up a Next.js app for the front end, and then does the whole static site generation for the index page, and then dynamic catch-all page route, and then does the static path thing. And I was like, whoa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was sick i got stoked i was like i i want to do that i literally I, something in me i was like i'm bored i'm at home i can only climb so much by myself jeff i, I want to do that 
I want to mm-hmm. make something positive out of this pandemic. And that that looks like it's going to be a dopamine hit when my code renders on the browser. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So long story short, that's what got me into it. I pinged Matt on Slack at WP Engine internally. How do I learn this? He pointed me to a boot camp. It was a Mernstack boot camp. Got out of it after eight months. And then uh, and then I, I basically became the first partner enablement um, tech enablement headless at WP Engine. Okay. Trying to like um, advocate for Atlas and headless WordPress. And then just a little career journey. Um, I decided I want to up my chops a little bit. I applied at Netlify to become a solutions engineer, worked there for seven months, absolutely wonderful company, still have friends there. Netlify is awesome. But um, with DevRel, which was always my like, oh my God, that seems like a dream job. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Well, uh, if we can bring it full circle and I mean, the teaching, the teaching thing, you know, that that's what I think solidifies it for a lot of people. And, and now knowing that about you, I'm like, oh, wow, this makes a lot more sense. Like, because I think to do well in dev advocacy and dev rel, like you have to have that teacher's mindset where like, I want to share, I want to help grow people. I want to, I want to teach, you know? And so that's really cool to see like, you know, and, and I didn't know that. And so that's fantastic. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. I And then, and that's the, that's the, that's the, um, that's, I guess that's the, uh, what compels me internally to, that made me like gravitate like a moth to a flame, if you will, mm-hmm. t- toward the DevRel role and it being my, like, this is the role I want to retire. This, this is like my, you know, uh, dream role. So this is, this is what led yeah, me to this. So yeah, that's, cool. yeah, that's my journey. So as along. somebody who's kind of, you know, gone through the whole boot camp experience like definitely probably did some self-learning there like what tips do you have for people who are maybe early on in their in their sort of developer journey if you will who that is a great question jeff man you were man that that's all that's a good question so um some tips i i would say that there there's there's three main tips that like Obviously, there's more than three, but the three main that I would say for people starting out that literally have no coding experience whatsoever and choose to go into programming. Mm -hmm. Number one is a mentor. Pick. Okay. Pick right off the bat. um, Befriend somebody, however you network, whatever it is, Jeff, I don't I don't care. Pick a mentor Mm -hmm. who, you know is a subject matter expert of what you're about to get into and can help you navigate through things when things aren't aren't breaking, when you have labs that you're like, oh my God, this JavaScript yep. tic-tac-toe lab is not working. Why are my if statements? At-? Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. All no, that stuff. That's important. Yeah, that's, it's hugely important because and, with, and I, without mine, yeah. Oh yeah, and I'll, I mean, I'll just go ahead and second that. And like, I call that person the more knowledgeable other. And so I don't always feel like, you know, like I've had a lot of different people play that role for me throughout the time I've been doing it. And like early on that having that more knowledgeable other is super important to, like you said, just help you get unstuck, unblock certain things. And like, even if it's somebody who can just, who just knows a little bit more than you do. Cause I would say that for me, like, I don't know that I've really ever had like a mentor, but I've wow. certainly had more knowledgeable others throughout the way who've I could learn something from and like were one step above me in whatever it is that I was trying to learn. Uh-huh. And for them to just kind of unblock you like that is 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 just amazing. And I since so in whatever fashion you find that, um I, I 100 percent like there's my stamp of approval. Yeah, that's but, that's the first thing. That's the first and foremost thing you, you need to, yeah. The second thing is, is that like, you know, as far as like a tip is concerned, within within whatever programming language, in this case, this is web development that we're talking about. And the stoke for me was like, I know it sounds cliche, Jeff, but at the end of the day, programming and coding is it's 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 hard. It's it's mm-hmm. it's, it's difficult. It's engineering. Um, it's difficult whether you're like a back-end developer, front-end, full stack, 
um, or embedded devices, C, whatever it is, whatever it is, it's hard because there's diff there's a lot of variables and dependencies and all these things that you have to think about when you code to make it work. Now, the second thing I, I, I always tell newbies that tell me, oh, man, as you guys get to know me and stuff and you start looking at my blog post and, and my videos, Stoke is like my... <laughs> my word you know jeff you've already you, we've been teammates for like a month or so mm -hmm. and you probably get just you're like fran stop saying stokes <laughs> but whatever man <laughs> the, the jam stoke runs stoke. deep with fran the stoke is high but again you got to be stoked for the what you're going to get into right because if you don't if if you don't there's a lot of people that came to me and i tried to like help them through this but if but they were just doing mm -hmm. it for the money or like you're yeah. going to dip out of it. You're going to you dip are. out of coding. And, and well, and I don't want to say that because like there are definitely people out there who can, I don't know, maybe the stoke is not the stoke anymore, but uh, it isn't, it isn't a career where like you will have to reteach yourself most of what you know every couple of years. Yes. And so if you don't like the process of learning and that part is frustrating for you, like if you can't come to terms with that and figure out a way to make it work for you, it is going to be really challenging to get into. And so like if that's debugging and sometimes like that stuff, you just learn with experience. Like I, I used to sit there and stare at problems for hours and just like, oh, let me console log this. And like I'm, I'm doing just dumb stuff and trying the same thing five times, just seeing if it works. And like eventually you got to learn to just like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to walk away and I'm going to let my unconscious brain oh, yeah. muddle, muddle with this while I go for a walk or work out or rock climb or whatever. And then you, sometimes you'll be like walking through the grocery store and be like, Oh, ding. And it's like done. And it's like a toaster. And it's like, it's done. Now I can scuttle back to my desk and type out this, whatever I've a been toaster. I like that. For, yeah. And it really is like that where you'll just it be is, like, man. Oh, bing. And I've had so many sort of realizations where I'm like oh that's what's wrong with this and like or another thing to try you know to get me past just trying the same thing over and over again and then but, I I think and this is the last last point of it like because newbies forget here's the thing someone's probably already done it google or whatever search engine you use is your friend mm -hmm. it is your friend <laughs> If you're stuck on something, Google it. Yeah. Half, more it, than half the it, time, Jeff, I'm like working on OAuth right now. I Googled it. Oh, there's an example. There's 10 mm -hmm. videos. There's a, a developer that's already done this and he's trying to show you how to do it yep. on, a, on Egghead or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I, I said this the other day, right? Like some of my most popular blog posts are literally some variation of an error message. Yep. Like copy and paste the error message into Google and like maybe you'll find that blog post. And literally that's, that's you know, thousands of people over the past years have stumbled onto this same problem and like copied and pasted the error code into Google and like yep. people find it and it's useful. And, you know, it, it is absolutely your friend. And I would also on, on the second, to second that in a different way, is I really recommend like the writing to learn piece is really important. But when you encounter Ooh. something like that, that isn't that isn't in there, yeah. really thinking of your blog or your personal website as like your secondary brain. And so that's where I put a lot of stuff that I have done and like want to document for myself so that I know where it's at and can go back and look at it if I want. And then it's also helpful because it's useful for other people who might have the same question. Oh, that's actually, I'm going to steal that from you. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good one. Sure. That's actually a really good one. So that's Please basically, do. yeah, that's my, I'm actually really curious because I know we've been teammates um, for about a um, little bit over a month now. Yeah. And I know you and I always have like conversations ad hoc um, on our one-on-ones and stuff. But yeah, tell me about, I mean, I'm going to oh, switch yeah, man. because okay. I, I can't wait to hear this. Because uh, to me, I look up to now. you, man. I look up to you because I think you <laughs> well, have more coding shops uh, than I do. And you help me on a lot of stuff. So yeah, yeah. Tell uh, me about. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So let me think about the best way to start this story. So I, I guess I got to just, I'll start it with WordPress because I think, honestly, that's really kind of how I got into web development, like a lot of people I think did. Um, and so to set the stage, I am, it's, uh, let me see, 
2008, 2009, maybe okay. I'm in school. Uh, I'm going to school to be like college. I'm going to college to be a secondary English teacher. Right. So uh, that's why I was so surprised about the teaching background, because I think a lot of people in developer relations have that itch. Um, and so I was doing uh, a bachelor's in English, trying to get my teaching certificate. Wow. And somewhere along the way, uh, the university that I was at had a really large WordPress multi-site instance that they would let students create blogs on. It's all like integrated with single sign-on and stuff. So I had a couple of professors who would get us blogging as a part of like, that's Whoa. those were our assignments, right? We would go and we would create uh, lesson plans and stuff like that online. And I, I just remember like, I was like, what's WordPress? And I was like, oh my gosh, I can type words into this magic box and like, you know, have them appear on the internet. I was like, this is fantastic. And so I went home and like, went back to my, my apartment and like, I was like, all right, I'm starting a structural linguistics blog. And like, Ooh. didn't wrote all this super nerdy content that probably <laughs> nobody cares about and nobody ever read, but it was just like, I'd always had that impulse to like share and write and do things like that. And so WordPress was like, I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty magical. So I kind of like kept an eye on that and, you know, finished up my degree and I ended up graduating in December. Right. Cause it was okay, like, I had okay. to do my student teaching and as you know, with teachers and stuff, there's not a ton of um, job opportunities available mid-year, right? There's kind of a Correct. cycle there. Yeah. And so I was, you know, like in the middle, just graduated in December, uh, you know, kind of had some job opportunities. And I was like, well, you know what, at the university that I was at, they also offered a master's degree in English. And I was like, well, you know, I kind of want to do this and give me more teaching opportunities, like to teach college if I wanted to. Um, and it would get me paid more as a teacher. And I was like, I might as well just knock it out right now while I'm used to living as a student. And so I got in there, um, and applied to that program, you know, was working with some of the same professors I'd done my undergraduate studies with. Oh, cool. And what, at that same time, I was kind of like, I, I, I started doing a lot of instructional technology stuff. Like it bringing oh, like technology like, into the classroom, like apps and Google, Google Docs and oh, wow. stuff like that. And so really trying to like be on the forefront of that field sort of as it as it picked up uh, back in like, you know, I think this was like 2011 or something like that. Wow, cool. So man. I tried to get on top of that. And so lo and behold, that same university was trying to basically create a department to teach and to, to be the instructional de technology department for the university. And so when I applied, you know, somewhere along the chain, like they talked with the people I'd been doing student teaching with, and they uh, advocated for the stuff that I was doing with technology in the classroom. So I ended up getting an assistantship with this group and kind of having my master's degree oh, dude. by working for this instructional technology department, which was fantastic, That's right? Sick, yeah. And so we sort of got that off the ground. And so like I did a lot of work with learning management systems, you know, a lot of just random networking stuff uh, to get like video capture set up in all these classrooms and a lot of really cool experience uh, just teaching people, right? Because that's ultimately what, what sort of my role was, was to work with faculty members, think about how you're trying to do something and you want to use X, Y, and Z technology. So let me make sure, you know, you know how to do that. Yeah. And so, you know, WordPress, I kind of kept blogging um, just on my own site, like, as I, as I went through that process. And then somewhere along the line, I was like, really like, I just kind of got frustrated that the fact that stuff wasn't out there that I wanted to exist. And I was like, you know, like if I, if I knew how to code, I could probably make this way oh, faster. Cool. And so like, and there was a bunch of times like that. And I have this kind of apocryphal story that I tell about myself. That's, that's <laughs> kind of funny. And it was like, I remember being, cause I was never, I was definitely an English major and I was never like the fluffy, like there, you know, there's not really any part of me that's, that's fluffy, if you will. And so I was like, let me count the exclamation marks in this book <laughs> from 1857. Like how many, how many periods are there? How many ING endings are there in this thing? And so like, like I said, I was like a linguistic person. That's like hilarious. Really into syntax and like all really my grammar yep and I taught grammar for a little while so I'm like 
So there's a lot of bleed over there for me as well. Like I have a lot of background in just like natural linguistics. And so I feel like programming and stuff like that, uh, it's really allowed me to be flexible and like learn a lot of stuff really quickly because I have a fundamental That's understanding of that stuff and how it works. And so like I was trying to, I was trying to figure out a way that I could analyze this text and do some of that analysis. And like, I started like with some really crappy spreadsheet example. And like, eventually I was just like, man, there's like gotta be a way to do this. And I can remember like Googling in the library and like lo looking up like natural language processing stuff. And I, then I come across like this Python package called natural language toolkit. And I oh. was just like, well, I got to go learn Python now, like, and just left that day and just like, Whoa. you know, sort of put, put my head down and like started doing that. And I mean, it took me a really long time to get started. So that's like, you know, 2011 or whatever. And so I sort of always, I sort of knew that's the way that I wanted to trend. Right. And it took me a couple of years to kind of get there um, with my skill level. And I did that in a couple of different ways. So I was still in my master's program at the time. Okay. And I convinced them like I'd already written sort of an undergraduate thesis, which is just this large paper about British poets. Um, that sounds you know, actually kind of cool. <laughs> it, it was kind of neat. It was yeah. super neat. Um, and so I'd already done that as a part of my undergrad. And I was like, and, and it was like a, an optional thing that I did for like research honors or whatever. So I was like, you know, I, I had a good relationship with the people that are the professors that I was working with. And I was like, I wonder if they'll let me try something off the ball. I'll like a little, little off base here. Okay. So I was like, look, like I, I'm interested in technology. Like I have this assistantship. I'm interested in English literature. Like it's clearly I'm in this program, but I'm also interested in teaching. So I was like, is there a way you all would let me do an interdisciplinary project uh, that would sort of encapsulate all these things? Oh. Basically I pitched to them, let me make a resource website for students Whoa. and teachers uh, on American romanticism. And, you know, we'll put it out there. Like I'll document the whole process and like whatever you all need to do to sign off on this, like, I'll do. And so like, it took a bunch of stuff. Like they had to go rewrite the manual for this program to like, allow me to do it. But I mean, Dude. it was just one of those things where I was like, you know, this would be such a cool thing for me to do because like, I've already done the paper thing. Like I've proven that I can, I can do research. I had published an article on like old English poetry and structural linguistics in some journal. Like I, I could do that if I wanted to, Ooh, but I didn't okay. want to, because I kind of knew that I was never going to be an English PhD professor. Like that just wasn't really how I wanted this to play out. But I definitely was interested in transitioning into tech, interested in learning yeah. some development skills. So they signed off on it. And I spent like a year creating that website, like started getting more into JavaScript, like did, did a little bit of PHP, like self sort of self-hosted my own WordPress site through that and got that up and running. Um, and then sort of when I was done with the master's degree program, like that site launched and it actually got a bunch of traffic. I mean, it was like, I, uh, at a point it was getting like 10,000 page views a month. I was getting letters from teachers all over the place being like, Oh, you know, thank you. Like this is, this is really Whoa. helpful. Having, having their students use. So it did all of the things I wanted it to do, which was like, my point was like, you, you have these people who write these academic papers and like they sit in a book on a shelf and nobody ever reads it. I want to make something useful. I yeah. want to learn something. I don't know what it will be, but like, that's part of the process. And so like, I'm really so grateful to have all those people. And like, those are people I would call mentors and they weren't necessarily like development mentors, but really advocated for me. Let me do some stuff that not you. everybody got to do. Man, um, Jeff, let, you, out of curiosity, before I forget, is that URL still, is the site still up? Because I'm curious so it, it isn't, and oh, I'll tell you why. Man. No, 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 and it's okay because like this is the it. best. This is the it. best <laughs> lesson. Now, and I, I've got some screenshots I can show. It was American okay. Romanticism. All, I still own the domain name, but going back to me not knowing anything, right? And so this is the thing that keeps on teaching. Okay. So uh, I, 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 let me wrap up that period, and sure, then sure. so I ended up getting a job. Right. That 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 department that we created, they ended up hiring me to to be like a full time technology trainer. Uh, after I finished my master's, I started teaching, uh, you know, college writing classes, taught some grammar classes as a part of the education thing. So like still, still got that stuff turning in the background, but at the same time, now I'm more certain than ever that I need to keep, keep on with the development stuff. So I enrolled in like Treehouse. I don't know if you've heard of them. Uh, I it's actually like have. Online, it's an online. Yeah. And they've got some bad press recently. They've done a lot of like reorganizations 
Um, so I don't know that I'd recommend them now, but when I went through it, it was fantastic. Um, and just kind of just what I needed. It was that more knowledgeable other um, that that I could sort of pace along with as I had time. And so that job just sort of offered me the continued opportunity to like practice those skills. And like, I'd make like little widgets. Uh, we had a learning management system. So I made a bunch of API tools oh, wow. that would like push and pull data and like automate a bunch of processes for us. Um, and then, you know, at some point like decided I'm going to take the next step into uh, development. Like I'm, okay. and, you know, look for a full-time job as a developer. I went and worked for an insurance company for a couple of years. And like the whole time as I've gotten oh, wow. better, I'm also like freelancing and doing some stuff like that. Wait, um, so, so you so you were a developer at an insurance company maintaining their web app or site. Yep. Yep. Oh, cool. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That was, okay. that was sort of after this stint in education. Oh. But that kind of gets me to the point where you asked about is that website still live? And so one of the reasons I was like adamant that I pitched this was because it was a great ongoing learning activity for me. And so like eventually, because I was stupid, like that site and my personal website got hacked and it was filled with a bunch of NSFW oh. pictures. Oh. And like, I mean, it was totally mangled. And so I had to like, I, I sort of dealt with all that manually because I wasn't willing to pay Bluehost a bunch of money. Um, and that's where I decided, all right, like I'm going in. Oh, so, man, so what a for lesson. a period, for a period, like I have a screenshot that I'm not willing to share publicly, but if you Google Jeff Everhart for this period, yeah. no, I mean, not now, but like oh, okay. this <laughs> six month period in 2016, it was just all these like NSFW content that <laughs> somebody had spammed my entire website. And, oh like, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Which, so, oh my man. And we could do a whole podcast on its own on website security. But anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Jeff. And, and so, I think there's a common theme that, you know, w between our journeys, it's the teaching background, man. That's kind of cool. It is. Man. Honestly. It is. So that's really for me what, you know, from, from there, I kind of did the insurance company for a little bit. Yeah. I've always done sort of freelance stuff for local agencies, building WordPress sites. Uh, you know, I've helped a couple startups build MVPs uh, and things like that. And then I moved back from there in, into a technology role uh, back in education at uh, a larger university where oh. we would, you know, work with professors who had grant That's funding cool. and, you know, develop them web applications and stuff like that. And we did a lot of support for the online learning folks. Um, and so, yeah, that, that is the, sort of the common thread for me is like, this, this job lets me have a more specific focus on technology, but then also allows me to scratch that educational teaching itch, uh, which is which is pretty fantastic. And I, I do actually, it's interesting because there's like um, two more things I kind of wonder that I have questions for you. The first, the, the next question is, is that um, why you obviously have um, experience in both traditional and headless. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as Jamstack folks like to also say monolithic versus monolithic. headless. Yeah. Monolithic. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jeff, why, why the stoke more on headless or are you stoked for both? You're just more, you just got hired on the DevRel team for headless, but you're stoked for no. Like why? I mean, what, what's, I think uh, I'm, I'm certainly somebody who's stoked for both. Okay. I mean, my, okay. my website, my personal website is, you know, been chugging along as a monolithic WordPress site. Uh, for quite some time. Okay. But uh, during my last stint in, uh, you know, like the last time I was a developer, basically, because I, I there was a position, there was a period in there where I'd sort of transitioned into like technical management for a year or so. Yeah. After that was the last thing I did right before coming here. Um, so I washed my hands of that management business because <laughs> um, I, I just enjoyed being closer to the work and like yeah. you know, I I like growing people, but some of the politics and when you work in large enterprises like the government it's it's not oh fun to there's do so much red tape man yeah there is and it's given me a great insight into like technology purchasing and evaluation and stuff like that but um you know so i'm glad i did it but certainly happier uh, a little bit closer to the craft i guess um and i had a point no you were just saying like you're stoked for both, but like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, so, uh, why more, Devrel more headless? More, yeah, yeah, yeah. More and more, I found myself drawn to extending WordPress into 
some sort of headless thing, okay. whether it's like I'm using one API and I'll call this like the partially headless method where like maybe I've got a static or a traditional monolithic site, but then I've got these widgets on the site that use the APIs to build really neat functionality that it would have been difficult to build in a traditional way. And so it's really about that exchange of JSON data, really, if we're looking at it, because like some of the ways I might do that or have done it in the past, like, oh, do I echo out this blob of JSON in my PHP template? And it just like all sort of felt dirty. And so I think that's part of what drew me to this was like, interesting. I had like, I've always done WordPress stuff. I've never really considered myself primarily a WordPress developer. I would say I'm definitely a JavaScript developer. So Node ecosystem, Express APIs. That's like what you associate laws. with. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yes, for you sure. group what yourself. I identify. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. If I had to say like, this is my ecosystem, it's this. And like WordPress serves this purpose as this nice place I can publish content. Um, Your data, but yeah. it doesn't, yeah. It, like the, the front end piece of it never really kept up with what I was doing in the JavaScript world. And so like with the introduction of the REST API, like in 2016, I think that's when it got merged into core. Like I was like, oh man, I can do all this stuff. Like I can do the jam stack with WordPress still. And so like, I just sort of trended a lot of my own development techniques to use that. Um, and I will say why, why headless, why now it's because like, I would build these partially headless things, or in some cases, kind of like fully headless things. Um, and, and I did that because it was like the best, the best way, the best, you know, the easiest thing for the clients in that perspective and like what allowed us to make the best product. But there had always been this barrier to doing like really sophisticated full headless stuff because when I was on a small development team, like obviously as the state, like we couldn't go out and be purchasing stuff from all these different vendors. And so it was really hard for us to think about supporting both the node application and the WordPress and side. And the WordPress side, yeah. And yeah. when I saw that WP Engine was working on this and like how far they'd kind of come, I was like, oh man, this is it. This is like, this was the complete solution that people need to really kind of take this to the next level. For, for, for a certain type of development team, right? Because yeah, if we had yeah. had more budget and we had had more flexibility in our solution providers, like I think we would have done a lot of stuff like that way earlier, but it was just like, we didn't and we couldn't. And, and because of the people that I was working with who maybe like, you know, I've descended into the depths of server management. Like I, you know, like <laughs> I've gone and generated my own SSHTs. Yeah, exactly. DevOps. exactly. And like DevOps. Yeah. And I've done some of that stuff on my own enough to like know that it's painful and Ooh, it's I'm insane toil. for wanting to do it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I, and that's when I go back to like my hacked website, that was my solution. I was like, well, I'm going to take control of all this. I'm going to understand every nook and cranny of Apache or Nginx and all of this stuff. And like, I was running my WordPress site on like a bare metal EC2 instance, <laughs> all of my stuff pre like installed by me. And it was, it was a crazy idea, but it taught me so much about the web stack and like yeah, all of that, that yeah. I was able to sort of, you know, undergirds, I guess, what, what I'm able to do now. Man. And also allows me to appreciate those abstractions when they work and do something really well. A hundred percent. This which is the rise of like yes yes a product that I was like wow yeah this this is what this is what this this development style needs to to take it to the next level so I think that's for me why I was here and like I was always doing semi headless stuff anyway yeah it was just it was le it was clunkier than it it could be now with kind of the platform that WP Engine's focused on building. I, um, I think current state of the decoupled Jamstack nation, if you will, is in a it's it's. We're we're in an up we're we're in a we're in a wild time right now in a good way, mm -hmm. Jeff for sure. With all these optimizations being made on all these frameworks like Remix, Next, Gatsby, all this stuff, Vue, and then on the CMS side of things with WordPress, and what we get to do here on the DevRel team in yeah. making sure that it's up to date with those purpose built headless CMSs, and we, it's yeah this this. You, we should, you should, you and I and everybody else doing headless WordPress should be jam stoked and super stoked. Yes, for <laughs> so, sure. Anyway, for sure. <laughs> no.
Uh, yeah. And so that's that's kind of how I got here. I don't know. I I, I wanted to ask other... you about some poets about like Williams Word, Wordsworth and Mary Shelley. Oh man. But anyway, okay. we're not going to no, go that. And that well, Whitman. and I I wrote a yeah, and Walt Whitman, I mean, and Talk that's what myself. I'm saying like yeah, yeah. that's got oh, oh Walt got me into this mess uh, cuz anyway. he was he wrote this book called Leaves of Grass and Jeff had to know how many exclamation points. Uh. Were there. And so like I literally there if you go on my website, there's a data visualization I made using D3 of all the words oh, in wow. that version okay. of Leaves of Grass. Cause like that, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's literally, I was like, well, I just remember being like, well, I got to go do this. Man, and I luckily I was like naive enough just not to quit. And man, man. yeah, it, yeah, that, that, I, I got to check that out. Cause when you told me about your English background and us being both teachers, um, I spent extensive time um, writing um, analysis on, on um, Song of Myself and, oh, and nice. just self, yeah. self, yeah, self, uh, yeah. self reliability and all that stuff. Anyway. We could nerd out about that on another time, but we'll yeah, have so our Walt Whitman podcast. Podcast, yeah. So, uh, Walt Whitman would appreciate WordPress, though. That's for sure. I feel like he would. He would Walt appreciate would. WordPress. Like, we're democratizing yeah. publishing was publishing. like part of Walt Whitman's <laughs> MO, man. So, you know, like, uh, that's oh, that's man. where we're at. But that's cool. So it's awesome that we've both gotten to know a little bit more about each other. Yep. Hopefully you, our listeners, uh, feel like you know us as your new Headless WP podcast hosts a little bit better. Um, and so I think maybe on that note, Fran, we can wrap it up and yeah. 